At this point, we've gotten back data from the Yelp API successfully. And moreover, we've actually converted it into exactly the format that we want in order to display it inside of a scrollable list on our main activity. Our job now is to take the response that we get back and notify the recycler view that we have data now and it should re-render itself. The first thing I'm going to do is define a variable for the list of restaurants. And then we need an adapter for the recycler view, which we're going to define later. And this is the adapter is going to take in two parameters, one which is the context, and then second, which is the list of restaurants. And before we define the adapter, I'm going to go into the activity main.xml, go into the design tab, get rid of the hello world text, but drag out a recycler view. And this will prompt you to add in the recycler view library. So tap on OK. And what we want to do here is fill out the properties of this recycler view. Sometimes I've noticed that the attributes tab doesn't come up until I quit Android Studio and open it up again. So I just did that and now I'm able to provide an ID and layout width and height to this recycler view. I'm going to call this RV restaurants. And I'm going to make the width and height match parent. And now let's go back into main activity. We need to now define this restaurants adapter class. So I'm, I'll let Android Studio help us with that. Create class, extract to a separate file. And the first parameter is going to be context, prepend it with val, and then this is going to be of type context. And then similarly, val restaurants. And this is going to be uh, a list, not mutable list, but just a list of Yelp restaurant. And this is going to extend or be a, a subclass of the base recycler view adapter. And the adapter is parameterized by a view holder. I'm going to define an inner class, which is the view holder. And now that we have the signature of the adapter, we can now implement the methods that are required. There are three methods. I'll implement all of them. And my preference is to have the view holder at the very bottom. And this me these methods that we're overriding should be at the top. The get item count is the easiest, just to fill that out first. This is going to be the size of the restaurants. I'll say restaurants that list dot size. And I have a separate playlist of just talking about recycler view, which is I'm kind of speeding through this because uh, it's mostly a repeat of what we've already done. I'll leave a link for that in the description. Uh, the next is on create view holder. So here we want to actually inflate a new layout and wrap that inside of a view holder. So I'll say return view holder. And then we want to get the layout inflator from the context and inflate a new layout. And I'll, I'll define this layout shortly, but we'll call it layout dot item restaurant. And this is going to represent one cell or one row in our recycler view. And we pass in parent and false. So let's go ahead and define that now. Create layout resource file. The base root element will be a constraint layout. Tap on OK. Just to get started, let's drag out a text view. Let's give this an ID of TV name because this will represent the name of the restaurant. And I'll also zoom in. So we'll give some sample text to better visualize what this might look like. like Charlie Street. Let's constrain this to be zero from the top and left. Okay, so in restaurants adapter, let's go back. And in the on bind view holder, the first thing we want to do is grab the restaurant at this particular position. This is pretty easy because we already have the restaurants list and I'm going to index into it with position. There's going to be a restaurant. And then what I like to do here is, especially if you're setting a lot of data on the view, which we will. Right now we only have the name, but eventually we're going to have a bunch of other info, such as the rating, image, address, and so on. Then I like to push all of that logic inside of the view holder class. So I'll say holder, which is an instance of the view holder, dot bind, and I'll pass in the restaurant. Let's add this as a function here. And so here's where we can actually um, specify the different views or widgets on the item restaurant. So I'll say TV name, and I'm going to set the text to be the name of the restaurant. And this is coming from the data class. JSON has set the name of the restaurant. So now let's go back into main activity and let's use the adapter. So I'm going to define the recycler view from the from the layout. 
So then I'll set the adapter to be adapter. And then the other thing we need for every recycler view is a layout manager. We'll just use the traditional linear layout manager and you pass in a context. And finally, once we get the data back from the Yelp API, we need to add that data into the restaurants list and then notify the adapter that the data has changed. So the very first thing we'll do is just check the body of the response and make sure that it's valid. So if the body is null, then something has gone wrong and we should indicate that. If the body is not null, then we can assume at this point that we have a properly formatted Yelp search result. And within that, we have all of the restaurant data. So we can just add that all into our restaurants list. So I'll say add all and pass in body dot restaurants. And then finally, we need to notify the adapter that the data set has changed. And one more thing we can do before we try it out is going back into item restaurant. Right now you'll notice that the constraint layout has a width and height of match parent. The height of match parent would mean that we take up the whole screen height and we don't want that. Instead we would like wrap content and you can see how it shrunk up just to contain the elements inside. Now we can try it and we expect to see just the list of restaurant names and nothing else in the app now. And then you can see the 20 restaurants that we got back and just their names. What I want to do now is drag out all of the widgets that we will need, text view, rating bar, image view, to make up the final display of the row. Here's what we're aiming for in terms of the UI of one row of the recycler view. We have one image view, a rating bar, and then one, two, three, four, five, six different text views. And so what I'm going to do first is drag out all these views, and then we'll organize them after that. So first, let's drag out an image view, and I'll have avatars as a sample data. The ID can just be image view. I'm going to hard code the width and height to be 100 dp. And then I'm going to drag out the TV name. Now we need a rating bar. So first I want to change the style of the rating bar to be small so it's not as unwieldy. And then I'll call the ID as rating bar and num stars will be five. For some sample data, we'll have a sample rating of 4.5 and the step size will be 0.5. That's what the Yelp system, the API gives us back ratings in increments of 0.5. Then we'll have one text view to the right of the rating bar, which describes how many uh, reviews there were. So we'll call this TV num reviews. And then I'll give it some sample text of 321 reviews. Then we'll have one more text view underneath, which is for the address. We'll call this TV address. And the sample text can be 41 Kenmare. And one more text view underneath that, which will be the category. And finally, two more text views, one up in the top right is for the distance. And finally, one more, which is for the price. And this is a number of dollar signs. Okay, one thing I want to do is add a margin around the whole parent layout, the constraint layout, so we can have some spacing in between different elements. So I'll search for margin and let's just add 8 dp all around. Okay, so now let's work on positioning these views. So first, the image view can be at zero, zero at the top left. And then we want to position the name to be to the left of the image view. And also zero from the top along with this guy as well. So this should be zero from the top and the right. The TV name should be placed to the right of the image view with some gap, maybe eight. And each of these, the rating bar, the address, and category should be positioned vertically below the element above it. I'm going to drag this out and make it four, and then that's it. And then the address should also be four DP below that. So 
So remember, our job here is to constrain each view horizontally and vertically. And these red exclamation marks give us a hint of which views we haven't yet constrained in both of those directions. So for each of these, we've now constrained them vertically because they're, they're below the element above them, but we haven't constrained them horizontally. So in order to do that, I'm going to just align the left edges of each of these views to the name of the restaurant, which is Charlie Street in this instance. Right, and now you can see the red exclamation marks next to each of these three views has gone away. For the number of reviews, I'm going to align the baseline of it with the rating bar. Those should kind of be in the same same level. So the bottom edges will be aligned. And also, in order to constrain it horizontally, I'm going to move it to the left of the number of ratings. And then finally, we have these two. So the distance is already constrained because we've pushed it to the very top right. The price, we're going to have it be relative to the distance. And we want to align the edges between these two elements. Right, so now you can see all the red exclamation marks are gone. And the other thing we'll do just to make it match a bit closer to our preview here is the name of the restaurant should of course be bigger and not bold. And then you can see that there's some graying out happening for all the text views except for the address. So I'm going to do that. So each of these should be a gray color, darker gray. And then this one, the title should be bold and also larger. Yeah, so that looks pretty close to what we have here. In the next video, we'll put it all together by referencing these views from the restaurant's adapter and populating the data that we get from the API.